Meanwhile, thousands packed into the Anderson Civic Center for Congressman Jeff Duncan's 12th Faith and Freedom Barbecue tonight. Uh, this year's event comes in the thick of the race for the Republican nomination for president and just days after the first primary debate. Two candidates were expected to be there tonight, but one had to have someone close to him fill in. That's right. And as, Zach, as Fox Carolina, as Zach Pilecki shows us, voters were still excited. It was one of the biggest crowds yet. Above the fruited plain. I think this large crowd shows an excitement in this campaign season, how people want to hear of an American first message. Congressman Jeff Duncan playing host as the pork and politics draws in conservatives from across the state. I'm interested in what the other candidates have to say, the presidential candidates. Some of politics' biggest names attend Duncan's Faith and Freedom Barbecue each year. But maybe most notable this time was who was not in attendance. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was slated to be the keynote speaker, but stayed behind in Florida as the state prepares to deal with a powerful storm. The governor's wife, Casey DeSantis, spoke on his behalf. You need to know a leader has to make a decision in that moment when it means your rights and your liberties. Do you put your finger in the wind? Do you figure which way the political winds are blowing? Do you try to think about your own political future? Or do you stand up for the rights of the people? And so you know when you put Ron DeSantis up in the White House, he is going to stand up for your interests, and he is never going to back down. Guarantee me that. DeSantis's 2024 opponent, Senator Tim Scott, also took the stage. The barbecue was a chance for the DeSantis and Scott campaigns to talk directly to more than 2,000 conservative voters from across South Carolina. The candidates really need to see how their message resonates with, uh, with a conservative crowd. Many of the voters we spoke with still undecided, less than six months from the South Carolina Republican primary. I think life is the biggest thing for me, and that's what I want to hear about, what people's stance is on life. The border is big, uh, but even uh, bigger than that is our financial situation. The Constitution is my biggest issue and what we're doing to our society. In Anderson, Zach Prolutsky, Fox Carolina News. And just before that event, Senator Tim Scott attended a different event, a town hall in the upstate. Uh, the presidential candidate's first public event since the debate from last week. Senator Scott talked about the importance of education, not just here in South Carolina, but across the entire country. Rich folks send their kids to private schools. The affluent send their kids to the right school districts by choosing the house they want to live in that they can afford in the best school districts in America. Parents like mine and so many other parents, they can't afford to buy a million dollar house to go into the right school district. So this is not just a poor person's issue. This is an issue facing the vast majority of working class Americans. And if we're going to do the right thing by our country, we need to make sure that we open the door of opportunity and education to kids who desperately need it. Now, Scott has said he will make it a focal point of his campaign to end what he calls indoctrination in schools. Meanwhile, Nikki Haley also holding her first post-debate event today. This one was held in Indian Land, South Carolina, just south of Charlotte. And Haley's campaign telling us Representatives Ralph Norman, Nancy Mays were also there with her. Haley is also expected to be in the Low Country later this week. She'll be holding a meet and greet in North Charleston on Thursday.